Devin, 23, back on Breakfast Television. Welcome back to the show, everyone. And while joining me in studio, one I'm very used to, Elias Makos, <laughs> is, is one true, of course, Expos fan. But Jonah Carey, uh, the writer, of course, and author of Up, Up, and Away, and, and other multiple best-selling books about baseball, of course. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, first of all, what a, a special time to, uh, you know, for this book to come out, because... It's going to be 10 years now that uh, there hasn't been baseball in Montreal. And we're going to see some games this weekend. Yes. Blue Jays, of course, against the Mets. Um, we want, before we get to the book, of course, we want to know what's your take on this. And it, because there's, a bit, there's been so many talks, right, Elias? We've been talking yeah. about this for months now. The hopes of getting a baseball team back into our city. I want to hear your opinion on it. I mean, three years ago, I would have said it was virtually impossible. Unfortunately, the flashpoint was actually probably Gary Carter passing away, and it created a lot of sentiment and nostalgia. Warren Cromartie comes in and says, let's try to do some things. Matthew Ross with his Expos Nation group, they've tried to do some things. And slowly, slowly, you can see a little bit of progress. I would say it's still unlikely for a lot of external reasons, but at least there's a heartbeat. And the fact that the stadium is going to be full, even if it's the Jays that are putting on the event, it's very exciting. Well, it is exciting because it's been months. We, like we were talking over the break, it's almost a sold-out event. And, and wait, Jonah, did you pay Eventco to plan this? I mean, it just seems like everything <laughs> worked out for you to release this book the same week that we're seeing all this groundswell of emotion. It's bananas. I'm a very uh, analytical person. I'm very rational normally, but I feel like there's something in the stars going on. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into the book a little bit. First of all, you've put together 40 years uh, mm -hmm. of, of Expo's history, the good, the bad, um, uh, the ugly. Lots of ugly. Uh, lots of, <laughs> I was going to say the good, the bad, the ugly. And tell me, first of all, uh, how, where, where does your knowledge come from? Obviously, your own personal. Yeah. And, and why so much ugly and less about, about what, what some of your favorite moments? I mean, I'm a born and raised Montrealer, went to Concordia, journalism guy, and then... True some, Expo fan. True Expos fan, went with my family, went with my friends, all that stuff, and then went on to become a baseball writer, so I had the perspective from being from here and the, and the outside perspective as well. But ultimately, the book is not really... I mean, it is a reflection of me in some ways, but it's... I did 140 interviews, so Rusty Staub and Andre Dawson and Tim Raines and Tim Wallach and Pedro Martinez and Dennis Martinez and a whole bunch of other guys named Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> they're, all, they're all in the book, so I feel like, you know, I, I kind of sprinkle things in there, but I'm trying to get out of the way a little bit, also be a journalist and let the players amplify their message, which is that it, for most of them, almost all of them, it was the best time of their lives to play in Montreal. Uh, speaking of Montreal, you are not someone that's going to sugarcoat things. I think you no. give a pretty, as you say, you're a rational guy. Mm -hmm. Why the Expos left, I'm, you know, as you tell, there's a lot of reasons why the Expos left. But you really cast some blame on certain people. Who do you, who do you think gets the brunt of that blame? You know, I think that it's easy. You know, we're, I'm from here, you guys. It's the same thing where it's, well, we're looking at the outsiders. So Bud Seelig, like Jeffrey Laurie, it's the Americans that did it. I don't love those guys, there's no question about it. But I think that it predates that. When Charles Bronfman sold the team and the consortium of lo local owners came in, we're talking about, you know, Bell, Provigo, Case de Chardin, all these big companies, and it's... They kind of didn't step up. They certainly had the money to, but they never did. You can't run a budget, a 1991 budget for a team in 2000 or 2010 yeah. or what have you. I think that was the biggest problem was they, they were just undercapitalized. They never got it together once Bronfman and, got out. And when you look at the value of teams, they, they made a big mistake, right? If they, The value of the Expos, if they had actually stayed in, would be astronomical at this point. You know, it's very interesting because we forget about the 90s. You're, you're totally right. Had you been a little more prescient, it would have worked out. But look, nobody wanted the Habs, for God's sake. George Gillette <laughs> has to fly yeah, in right. from the U.S. Who's this American? And now in the end, we all love George Gillette because he bailed the team out and got the arena and everything is great. But yeah, it was a tough, tough time. Closing hospitals, as Lucien Bouchard said, so we couldn't build a, you know, a baseball stadium. I do understand it from that perspective. Okay, so now that we're, of course, we're all in the hype of possibly bringing a baseball back to Montreal. What, what do you feel? Because you know, obviously, a lot about baseball coming back to Montreal. Yeah. It ha it's happened before. What do you think? Of course, it's two different eras now. What do you think will be our biggest challenge? There, there are many, like you say, external challenges, but what will be the biggest one? You know, if anything, I almost feel like having a billionaire or a multi-billion dollar company come in and do something, that's almost more likely than the other side. The reason I think that this Rogers-Bell dispute, Rogers takes hockey, Bell's got, whoa, we've got to get a there's sport. There's opportunity. You know, there's opportunity there. So that makes some sense logically. It's the MLB side. Number one, they have to forget that baseball failed in Montreal, which it did for whatever reason, but it did. And then number two, you either need relocation or expansion. You're not going to expand because their teams don't want to share their money. Mm -hmm. Relocation... There's no team that's really in as bad shape as the Expos were, so those factors need to be worked out. But again, it's unlikely, but it is possible. I would have said it was impossible. Okay. That was a mistake. It is now possible. Now, quickly, though, uh, you said there's a lot of bad and ugly in here. In your personal opinion, it might be in here, might not be in there. Yeah. What is your favorite 
all-time Expos moment. Curtis Pride, 1993. I was too, really too young to have been at the Blue Monday game or whatever, so, which is not a good memory at all. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I missed any playoff run. But Curtis Pride, 1993, they're down by two runs. They bring this guy in, second half out of his career. It's in the middle of a pennant race. He hits a two-run double. He's deaf. And he said afterwards that he couldn't hear the fans, but he could feel the vibration oh, wow. through the turf from the full stadium going crazy. That, to me, was the big O at its best, and it was a great time for Expo baseball. When you recount that story in your yes. book, it's one of the most passionate moments because you were there at that I game. Was. So um, a lifetime of memories in that book. No doubt. It's, it's, it's definitely a personal uh, tale, but it's also a tale of journalism. However you want to approach right. it. It's a good damn book. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> in oh, stores for sure. today. And people, get your copy, of course, in stores today. And Jonah Carey, thank you so much for coming on the show and being here for the celebrations uh, of the return to baseball, at least for a weekend coming up uh, over the weekend. Guys, we're going to take a short break on Breakfast Television. We could be talking to this guy for hours, uh, but we got to take a short break. We'll be right back here on City.